Hello, this is SynthChaser from SynthChaser.com, back here with the Sequential Circuits Profit 5. I did a few videos last spring where I showed the restoration of this Profit 5 that I picked up broken. For those of you who missed it, you can check out SynthChaser 64 to SynthChaser 68. So even after I gave it the full SynthChaser spa treatment, there's, there was still a problem that I needed to track down, and I got busy with other customer repairs, so I never quite finished it. Well, today we're going to finish it. The problem seemed to have no rhyme or reason. Everything seemed fine, and then as I'd use it, seemingly random keys would play the wrong notes. So two keys next to each other could be playing the same note, or they could be fine. And there didn't seem to be a pattern to it, so it's not like every fifth key I pressed had a problem. Um, so I'm thinking, could it be a problem with the, the DAC, the digital to analog converter? Could it be some problem with the digital circuitry that demultiplexes the keyboard control voltages? Uh, well, let's let's check it out and find out. So I'll turn it on, and it's tuning. And the tuning is done. And everything seems to be fine. So uh, let me fiddle around with it for a little bit and get the problem to reproduce itself. So it really didn't take long, but I found these two keys here that you see what I mean? It doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason to it. So uh, let's uh, get it into service position and, and take a look at what's going on. So I've got it into service position and I want to see what voice is playing when we experience this problem to see if there's any pattern to this. So I've done other videos where I've troubleshot uh, problems with Oberheims and unlike the Oberheims which have a nice little LED that tell you uh, which voice is being gated, the Prophet 5 has nothing like that to help you out. So we're gonna have to look for a gate signal coming into the envelope generator chip, uh, this, this Curtis 3310 chip, and we can look on pin Four for that. So let's let's check it out. So let's uh, start here. This is C, and it sounds like a C. This is D, and it sounds like a D. This is E, and it sounds closer to an F than an E. This is F, and it sounds like F. So, so we have a problem here. Uh, the E isn't sounding right. So we're going to look on pin 4 of these chips. So voice 1 is the one here on top, voice 2, voice 3, voice 4, voice 5. And it carries all the way down the line uh, with, with that pattern. So let's check uh, pin 4 here. So actually that E seems to be gating voice 1. And just for fun, the F is gated by... Voice 5. So, so we found uh, the first occurrence of the problem is on voice 1. Here's another one. This also is between an E and an F. Let's see. This is the E that sounds more like an F. Let's check which voice that is. So that's also voice one. Um, I'm just going to hit random keys and I'm going to go back to this E and F. And now, now the E is playing an E. Let's see if it's still on voice one or if it moved to a different voice. It's not on voice one anymore. Got reassigned to voice five. So I'm going to play around with it a little more and see if there's this pattern continues, but right now we're two for two where the problem note is with voice one. So I played with it some more and it does seem like our problem is with voice number one. So another thing that's different from the Oberheims is the Prophet 5 doesn't gate the voices round robin. 
So if a note is already assigned to a particular voice and you gate that note again, it's going to use the same voice that gated it last time. Like on an Oberheim, if you pressed C and then D and then C again, you'd use voice 1, 2, and 3. But on the Prophet 5, you would use voice 1, 2, and then 1 again. And that's what threw me off the trail of this problem at first, is because I was assuming that it was a problem if it was a problem with a specific voice, that I'd hear it every fifth key I press. But that's not the case with the Prophet 5. All right, let's see if we can narrow this down any further. Right now, the patch that I've created just uses oscillator A. So if I put unison on, uh, we should be able to hear that voice one sticking out like a sore thumb. So let's put on unison. Yeah, so we can hear the out of tune oscillator sticking out in unison. So now let's switch just to oscillator B and see if we have the same problem. So we want to see if the problem is uh, on both oscillators on the voice or, or just one of them. So this is oscillator B in unison, and it sounds in tune. All the voices, all five voices playing at the same time, substantially sound in tune. So it sounds like we have a pitch problem, a pitch drifting problem with oscillator 1A. All right, so we figured out the pitch drifts on oscillator 1A, but is it a problem with the control voltage that the oscillator is receiving, or is it a problem with the oscillator itself? and uh, we're going to do a little experiment to figure it out. So uh, I'm connecting my oscilloscope, which has a built-in frequency counter, to the oscillator uh, Curtis chip, the CEM3340. So the sawtooth wave of this comes out on pin 8. So I've connected the, uh, the oscilloscope there to measure the frequency. And uh, I'm connecting my multimeter, so I've got my multimeter grounded. The black lead is grounded, and the red lead I'm connecting to this op amp uh, that buffers the control voltage going to the oscillator. Uh, so this is the sample and hold for oscillator 1A. Alright, so I got everything hooked up and I'm going to turn on the synthesizer. And it's going to go through its auto-tune routine. You see it doing kind of interesting stuff there with the oscillator. And now it's done. So I'm going to put on my oscillator oscillator A only patch and we'll get a, a note assigned there to uh, oscillator 1 A so the note that I hit was uh, B and our keyboard control voltage is a 4.459 and our oscillator is at 122.2 hertz. And we're just going to let this sit. And I can see that this is just changing already. It's at 121.8, 121.7, 121.9, 121.9, 121.9. What I'll do is I'll make this a little uh, I'll make exactly uh, like like this one twenty one point three, but our keyboard control voltage is staying staying pretty constant. So I'm gonna let this sit for a while, and we'll see what we wind up with in say another five minutes. So it's five minutes later and our keyboard control voltage has stayed the same. Our note frequency is at 122.1 hertz. Now it's 122.2 hertz, which is the same as what we started. But I kept my eye on it as it went along and it actually went down to 120 hertz at some point. And now it seems to be working its way up past 122.2. Uh, and let's, let's just keep an eye on it and see where it goes. So it's been just another minute and it's at 123.2 hertz. So now we're up 1 hertz, whereas before we were down 2 hertz. So this thing is all over the place. And, uh, and basically it looks like our keyboard control voltage 
is, is fine. There's no leakage there. But the problem is that this oscillator is just drifting all over the place and pretty significantly too. Um, so the most likely suspect here I think is going to be the Curtis chip itself. Uh, the Curtis oscillator chip has a built-in temperature compensation but uh, it doesn't seem to be working out too great for this oscillator. So let's replace that Curtis chip and then repeat this same experiment on the same oscillator. Alright, I've got the new Curtis chip in, so we'll turn on the synthesizer again. And uh, when it's ready for us, we'll switch over to that oscillator A only patch. And we'll get a note assigned there. I'll do B again. So this time it looks right on the button, 123.8. 6 Hertz. Control voltage is 4.135 4.135 and uh, 123.5 Hertz. So let's let this sit for five minutes and come back and see see what it looks like. Alright, so it's been five minutes. The keyboard control voltage has been steady like before, and our final uh, frequency on the oscillator is 123.22 hertz. And what I noticed from watching it is it, it went down from 123.5 to about 123.2 or 122.3 within the first couple minutes, but now it's been pretty stable right here uh, around 123.22. 0.22 Hertz for the last couple minutes and this chip that we put in was brand new chip cold had you know ha hadn't been warmed up at all so I would expect you know a little bit of warm-up time for it to get stable and that seems to be the case here uh, the other one so this one moved a total of 0.3 Hertz from a cold start the other one moved over a 3 Hertz range uh, from a warm start so uh, it looks like we have fixed the problem and the problem was with a bad Curtis chip, an unstable oscillator. So while everything's looking good, I don't want to say that everything is fixed and the keyboard is perfect just yet. I want to give it a good final test before I, I give it the synth chaser seal of approval. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn everything off and I'm going to let it cool down. Once it's all cold, I'm going to turn it back on, I'll let it auto-tune, I'm going to let it sit for an hour, and then I'm going to come back and check to see if all the voices are still in tune. You know, if when I engage unison, everything sounds consistent and, and in tune from voice to voice. So let's do that now. All right, so everything's nice and cool now. So we'll go ahead and turn the keyboard on. And we'll get over to my oscillator A only patch and put on unison mode and everything substantially sounds in tune so let's let it sit like this for an hour and and come back and see if everything still sounds substantially in tune so it's an hour later and I'm back and we're going to test this out now and see if these voices are still in tune and uh, if any of them have drifted out of tune we'll be able to tell because we put them on unison and things will sound kind of dissonant if one of them is uh, playing a different note uh, or significantly out of tune. So let's check out oscillator A. Sounds pretty good. That sounds really good. Uh, they haven't drifted apart after an hour. Now let's turn on oscillator B and verify the same thing, uh, that these are still good. That sounds really, really good for an analog synthesizer that's 35 years old. Uh, those oscillators are staying in tune. They're staying together and not drifting we have successfully completed the restoration of this keyboard. So now that everything's working fine, I'm going to close it up. I'm going to change these badges to kind of clean it up a bit. And while I made my own patches for testing and fiddling around, 
and they sound kind of cool and everything. I think I'll uh, load the factory patches in, and maybe I'll make another video on how to do that. And then this Prophet 5 will be ready for sale. And if you're interested in it, you can go over to my website, synthchaser.com, and uh, look for it there. This has been Synth Chaser from SynthChaser.com. Thanks for watching, and uh, if you'd like, connect with me on Facebook. I finally signed up for Facebook and have a page over there. Right now I have one like. My mom is the only one who likes my Facebook page. So uh, throw me a bone and hop over to Facebook and, and, and connect with me there.